Grace, mercy, and peace to you all in the name of God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. If you join me in a word of prayer. Lord God, we humbly come before you today and before this word. Trusting, Lord, not in our own strength, our own power, but in your power, your spirit, to move us, to guide us, to bring us to the knowledge of the truth, to have us to be, to live in the way of truth, not by our power, by yours. Lord, as we listen today, help us to hear, and to live, to act in you. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. <coughs> Scripture often sets before us two different kinds of paths. If you read enough of Scripture, there's, there's often the experience where there's, you know, there's this way you can go, or there's this one, right? You can go here, or you can go there. Now, let me just try some of these out with you. I'll say one of them. You see if you can come up with the opposite of what the scriptural path is, right? Uh, so if I say wisdom, the opposite of wisdom, the other path that scripture establishes is foolishness or folly or various other options that are available, but it generally tends to be around foolishness. If I say holiness, sinfulness, wickedness, I would have also accepted wickedness, right? The... Uh, that scripture kind of says, here's, here's this good path, here's this holy path. Here's this, the holy path is the path that seeks after God. The wicked path is the path that oppresses other people and that seeks for itself and, and desires destruction. The sinful path. If I say right, you would say wrong. wrong. <laughs> good, that one was easy, right? Should have started with that one. We'll do that at 10 uh, Right and wrong. In Paul's work here, he sets up this other one for us, this other kind of twofold path. Here's the way of the spirit, then there's the way of the flesh. Okay? Now this doesn't mean, I want to just make sure this is utterly, totally clear, this doesn't mean that created stuff, because a lot of Christians kind of got this into their head at some point, that created stuff is, is bad, terrible, wicked, and evil. Created stuff is good. God made it. Right? Now it has fallen. It has fallen into sin along with the rest of us. But God has made created stuff. He has redeemed created stuff. The, the point of having the flesh is that the flesh is kind of the place where desires live. The flesh is the place where desires can move and have action. Paul says this way of the flesh is incredibly powerful, incredibly strong. It can lead to some incredible destruction amongst people. Now I want to have that in mind as we talk about Ezekiel. In Ezekiel, like <clears throat> most of the prophets, you have the wrong thing happening. Detestable things. There's this little uh, moment here with Ezekiel where God's like, hey, you want to see some things that are detestable? And then uh, Ezekiel goes off and he sees this detestable thing and he's like, I will show you even more detestable things. Okay? <laughs> they kind of go off and they go off and then there's this detestable thing and there's this detestable thing. And, and here's this, this one moment in Ezekiel where the elders of the people have walked off to some cave. And there in the cave, Ezekiel is able to look in and he sees that there in the cave there's all of these writings and there's these images and they're, they're there worshipping all of the idols that Israel has had. It's this fantastic metaphor for the internet, right? Here's this place filled with just everything detestable that you can possibly imagine. And Ezekiel, he looks, and, and it's, it's like there's this giant flashing wrong way sign going on with the images that, that are there for Ezekiel 
and this is the wrong way, but this is the way in which the people of Israel are walking. This is the way in which the leaders of Israel are walking. This is the way in which Israel's going to go. And they've been going there, they've been going there, they, they keep walking down the wrong path. They, there's the option for holiness, they choose what is sinful. There's, there's the right way, and they, they pick the wrong. There's, there's this spirit way, and they choose the flesh. What are you going to do with Israel? Who so goes off into the caves, that are hidden. But it's not going to just stay in the caves, it's going to come back out of the caves. What are you going to do with Israel? Consider, if you will, uh, for a moment, the act of walking together. I need some help. Jim, can you help me for a second? We didn't practice this in any way, shape, or form. I didn't even tell him until right this minute. So, Jim, I want you to do something. I want you to be the Holy Spirit. <laughs> which, which comes easy to Jim. The Jim is the Holy Spirit. Jim, I want you to just walk. I am going to be, I'm going to be Israel. For a moment here, okay? Thank you. Can you just demonstrate walking? Okay? So Israel does this. <laughs> do, do, do. You can keep walking, Holy Spirit.
So Paul says his, his image, you know, he, he likes to shift his images. And, and, and I, I honestly, I was sitting there, I'm like, man, he's, I can just picture him sitting there with these Galatian people. And, and you know, he's like, what am I going to say to these people? What is the thing that I'm going to bring out to these people when, when I want to talk about what it is to be the people of God? Being the people of God is not sitting in, in some cave filling yourself with, with all of the idols and the images and the detestable practices that exist. Filling yourself is not that. Filling yourself is, is like being crucified. But some of us would rather retreat to our caves. Some of you maybe have a cave. Does anybody have a cave? Man cave, a old man cave. Sorry. It's a new thing I'm making today, a old man cave. Not for myself, but just making the word up. Right? Some of us have caves. We understand there's these places of retreat that we want to, to run into. We want to we wanna find the things that we want to have. Paul says, you know, the image that's going to be for these people, the image that, that we want out in front of all of these people is this Christ Jesus who was crucified. And so if he was crucified, you are crucified. And that the action of him being crucified, the action of that has brought crucifixion to us. The flesh and all of its passions have been condemned to the cross so that they would die forever. Martin Luther picks up on this when he talks about baptism. Baptism, tremendously important to the action of the church. We had one last week, we're going to have one next week. It's fantastic. I love baptisms. The daily, the old Adam drowns. The new person, he didn't say person because he lived in the 16th century, but I'll say person because I live in the 21st. The new person rises forth. This new Adam in us. The flesh must be crucified. And there's a whole point to why we have the flesh be crucified. The flesh gets crucified for the sake of our neighbor. When you walk in step with the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is with you. When we are off in our cave, the fruit of the Spirit is not with us. <laughs> and so Paul, he, he can go on and then he can talk about the way that the fruit of the Spirit is going to work in the lives of these believers who are walking and who are keeping in step with this spirit. What does he say? You got, you got the Bible verses there? What does he say about them? Hold on my bulletin. What does he say that they are? Verse 22 is the last paragraph. A lot of you, you probably list these, although when you get to forbearance, we all, I remember it in his patience. Changing words on me. What are they? Go ahead, let's just read it off. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. This fruit of the Spirit is not fruit of the Spirit for my own sake. And it's not fruit of the Spirit, so at least I may love myself more. That I may forgive me for all my sins. That I may forbear or have patience with people who are around me. That I may be gentle with my own self. To walk with the Spirit. To walk out. To walk out of the cave. To walk out of the cave. The cave is a place for Israel, for us, where we are interested in us. To walk by the Spirit is to walk out of the cave with the fruit of the Spirit right there present with us at every moment of our day. Today, 
We get to say, you know what, as people who follow Jesus, as, as people who have encountered this, this crucified and risen Lord, as people for whom the Spirit is upon us, we don't go back to the cave. We walk by the Spirit. In whose name we pray. Amen. Holy Spirit, there's a tendency, a trait, a, an ability that we have as humans to forget your power. <laughs> to ignore it, to walk the other way. Spirit, you've come to walk with us, to guide us into the ways of truth, of rightness, of holiness, of the Spirit. We ask, Lord, that we would be guided, not by our desires, our passions, the things that are so easy and easily consuming the Lord by the things that you would desire for the sake of our neighbor. Be with us today and tomorrow and throughout this life that we would walk, that we would keep in step with you. We ask this in your name. Amen. I invite you to stand. We join together in professing our faith. These are the words of the Creator.